Your Google Voice app might be in do not disturb mode right now and you don't even know it. This could be the simple reason why you're missing important calls on your Google Voice line. I received a few emails from some expats who have followed my videos and who are having some issues with Google Voice who wonder if porting their number to Google Voice is a good idea or not. Luckily, there are five really quick settings you can look at that should resolve about 99% of the problems. Let's get into those. Number one, like I mentioned in the intro, is do not disturb mode is enabled. If you quickly go into the app, click on the hamburger menu in the top left, right there at the very top, you will see do not disturb mode. If you're in the browser, you just click on the top right hand side and you can see that right there. If that is enabled, your Google voice line will not ring. Double check that first and just make sure you're not in do not disturb mode. Number two, check your incoming call settings in the Google voice app. This is where you tell Google Voice where to route your call. Like, hey, it's ringing, who do I ring? And in the setting, you will see your devices, you'll see the web, you'll see any phones you are signed in on. Chances are, if you're not getting calls on your device, you might have that specific device disabled so that Google, you've told Google not to ring you. So double check that setting and just make sure you're set to receive calls on the devices you want to receive them on. Number three, your make and receive call settings aren't set up the way you want them to be set up. So navigate over to the make and receive call settings and in here you can tell Google Voice what data service to use. It'll say, do you want to use your data and Wi-Fi, or do you want to use your phone's carrier? Right here you gotta tell it what to do. If you are just using Wi-Fi on your phone but you have it set to use the carrier, that's not gonna work. So you need to go into here and make sure you have told Google where to find the data to power the Google Voice app. Number four, notifications are disabled on your actual device or your phone is in the phone's do not disturb mode. On iOS, this is easy to check. You just go to the settings, scroll down to notifications, scroll down to Google Voice, uh, in my settings, it's just called voice. So maybe you need to go down to that one. And then right here, you make sure that this is enabled. So yes, you want to receive notifications on this device from Google Voice. iOS also has do not disturb modes or focus modes where they will automatically mute notifications from different apps based on certain locations or based on your settings. For example, I have my phone set to mute every night while I'm sleeping because I don't want to get woken up. Double check those settings and make sure Google Voice is not being shut down by your operating system of your phone. Number five, last but not least, go to the settings app in Google Voice, scroll all the way to the bottom to the safety section. There's an option there called filter spam calls and texts. Obviously everyone hates getting spam calls and texts. So obviously you have that enabled, right? I found one time, I was waiting for an important call from my bank and it wasn't coming through. And after, I think they said they called me like five times and I said, this is bizarre, this should be working. I ended up, just to be sure, I went down and turned that off so to stop filtering my calls and then had my bank call me and it rang perfectly. So in this situation where my bank was calling from sort of a public number, Google Voice was automatically filtering that into spam because it thought it was like a spam number. So if you are waiting for an important call from like an institution or someone who's using kind of a, a 1-800 number and you're not receiving that call, there is a slight chance that it's being filtered into your spam by the Google Voice app. So I would just go ahead and turn that off and just see if the call or text comes through after you turn that off. And then once it's through, turn that spam back on because who wants to get spam? Last but not least, as a little goodie here, if you have recently ported your number and your Google Voice calls or texts just seem kind of unreliable, wait about one week. There's nothing in the Google Voice documentation that tells you this, but I've done a lot of porting with Google Voice, and I've learned that the first week is kind of hit and miss. Officially, they say, oh, your number ports within 24 hours, and it does, it shows up in the app. But I have found that sometimes it has taken up to a week for me to actually get some calls and texts, or I get some and I don't get others. And ultimately, if, if you've ported within the last week and you've checked these five settings that I just shared with you, I would just sit tight for a week and see if it resolves itself. It does take some time, 
for the phone registries all to update so that all the people can route your call to your new Google, new Google Voice line. So if you've checked everything and it's still not ringing and you recently ported the number, just wait about a week and just see if it comes through. So checking these five settings should fix, I think, about 95% of any incoming call or text ringing issues that you might encounter. The good news is they're really easy to fix. Just go check them all. I just shared them with you. And one thing to keep in mind that if you move devices or you sign in on a, on a different device, you want to go back in and double check these settings because they are unique for every device. And like I mentioned before, if you don't have that device enabled to receive calls, it's not going to work for you. So I would set a reminder to check these settings periodically, especially if you're signing in and out of multiple devices to make sure that the settings um, don't get changed from what you'd like them to be. At the end of the day, your Google Voice number is your lifeline back to the US. That's who your banks are calling. That's where you're getting two-factor authentications. It is worth taking the time to make sure you get these settings right so you don't miss any important calls while you're living abroad. Hope this video was helpful. We'll see you in the next one.